Hello and welcome to January 2019 and an update on my home electronics laboratory. I've done an original uh, video on the whole setup in my electronics lab and recording studio and then I've done a few updates whenever I add or change some equipment. Um, the new one here is my Christmas present to myself if you will and that is to supplement and or replace in some way my one remaining Heath kit uh, piece of equipment, my uh, frequency counter, which is a model IM4100. I don't use it a lot and uh, I really wanted to be able to get into a higher frequency range for a couple projects I'm working on higher than this can handle and I hadn't had it calibrated or calibrated it in quite a while. Uh, so I ended up getting this B and K or BK Precision Model 1823 Universal Frequency Counter, whatever that means. It's a 2.4 gigahertz top end. Right now I've got it hooked up to my Siglent SDG 1025 dual channel um, function generator and I have uh, channel 1 set to 21 or 27.150 kilohertz and channel 2 set to 11.925 kilohertz um, so going to channel 1, they're both turned on at the moment and got channel 1 hooked up in parallel with my Heathkit frequency counter and um, Channel A on the uh, B and K is also monitoring that same point. So I've got 27.15 um, here and it's not warmed up yet. Um, the uh, specifications on this are only valid after you've let it warm up for 30 minutes and this has only been on for about 3 minutes before I started this video. It's floating around the right value, 27.17 or so, um, a little bit higher than uh, the function gener generator is putting out, and I, I believe this to be accurate. Um, I suspect that this will drift in a little bit more once um, it warms up a bit. Um, but I'm going to be monitoring that and comparing it with a couple other references to make sure that it's within specs before I uh, can't return it anymore if it turns out to be out of whack. Um, there's also a couple of things I could do here uh, such as to engage a low frequency um, filter or low pass filter and that seemed to calm it down just a little bit. This connection is being done just with some alligator clips out in space and it may be picking up just a little bit of noise. <clears throat> this is These are high impedance inputs so that unshielded section might be picking something up. Uh, so by putting in the low pass filter I'm cutting out a high frequency element that it might be picking up um, and that did seem to bring it in very close it's now very stable at 27.14979, which is basically uh, what it should be, 27.15. So I think that um, other than maybe a little drift accuracy that'll get better as it warms up, it was picking up just a little bit of extra garbage um, from electrostatic fields and such. Um, and the Heathkit even though it hasn't been calibrated in a long time, is settled in pretty nicely. When it first came on, it was reading a substantially higher value, still 27 point something, but it was pretty far out, and now it's settled in there pretty nicely at 27.15 and a little noise on the last digit, but not bad at all for something that hasn't been calibrated in a long time. Uh, I do have it on a, a input attenuator of 10, if I take that down to no attenuator, it just goes kerflui here. It is picking up all sorts of garbage. 
So there's no adjustable um, threshold on this. You just have to try to attenuate noise with the attenuator and hope that the signal to noise ratio is adequate to get a decent reading. Um, so that's working, this is working, this is working. Now um, I mentioned before that uh, channel 2 is putting out 11.925 and if I go over here and change that it's 11.9249 which is basically 11.925 so that's uh, behaving about as expected and uh, this can go up to 2.4 gigahertz but not on all the inputs it actually has three inputs here a B and C and only input C is the one that's capable of the highest frequency response uh, the channels A and B are only good up to 100 megahertz to get to the uh, 2.4 gigahertz one needs to use input C and that's a uh, low impedance input of 50 ohm it's really intended for radio work and things like that and it's also limited to 3 volts maximum whereas the uh, inputs A and B can do it 250 volts peak to peak. Um, and there's a bunch of features on here which I won't go into great detail on but I can uh, select um, here inputs A, B, or C or I can go into a period monitoring mode or a totalizer mode where it's basically just a counter um, and a ratio between the A and the B inputs and um, I forget what that is and we're back to A and uh, there's a gate time you can hold the gate or let it run you can change the uh, multiplier on the gate um, here where it's uh, updating the gate is every point zero one seconds or I can go to a uh, point one second gate or a one second gate or a ten second gate I'm waiting for ten seconds to come up here there it goes So I'm going back to my one second gate. Um, <clears throat> the A and the B channels have AC and DC coupling. There's a 1 to 1 or 1 to 10 attenuator on both of them and a low pass filter that can be engaged for both of them. And uh, there's the variable trigger level. You pull it out for one uh, channel and push it in for the other one, I believe. The uh, nomenclature on here is not the clearest, but that's what I got from the manual. Anyway, I don't normally have to mess with that. Um, anyway, so I think this will be a good addition to my lab, and uh, thanks for watching. Hope you found it interesting.